We've worked on solving one-step equations, um, but we have to build on that, so we're working on solving two-step equations. Um, let's start with some vocab terms. We'll talk about the process to solve an equation, then we'll get to a couple examples, some that I'll do, some that you'll do. Um, but let's go to our, our first vocab term, so variable. We already know what this is. We have referred to this before, but a variable is just um, a symbol. Now, the symbol that we typically use are our letters, but a symbol that represents, oops, represents, right, represents a number or a, a value, right? It could be whole numbers, decimals, fractions, anything. We have talked about a coefficients um, in, in the previous notes, but we'll, we'll formally define it here. Um, what is its meaning? It is, it is the number in front of a variable. And we'll, we'll show the examples below. Um, but its meaning is, it, it says the um, quantity of variables. So how many are there? Okay, so an example here is in 3x. Um, I'm gonna highlight this, but it's just three, right? This tells me that there are three X's. If you don't have a highlighter, you can just circle it. In negative four Y, it's negative four. And five tenths or 0 0.5. Um, X, Y squared, this is just five tenths or 0 0.5, right? Those are the um, coefficients. Now, how to solve, now when we solve an equation, this actually requires order of operations. We typically use order of operations to simplify things. So if I give you like two times five plus six, or you do multiplication before you do addition, uh, so I'll be simplifying here, but in, in equations, we're trying to undo the operations, right? That's why we use inverse operations. Um, but I do wanna uh, kind of amend something here. Now, you've been using the acronym PEMDAS for probably a lot of your like education, but we're gonna adjust this here. Instead of P, we're going to put G. Now, the reason here is, is, is P uh, stands for parentheses. I'm going to put this off to the left. G, though, is, is kind of more inclusive here because G stands for grouping. And for this, um, parentheses is one type of group, but there are a lot more groups here. All right, parentheses... Um, we could have also brackets, or it looks like this. You could also have the numerator or denominator of a fraction. And, and we'll see an example soon. And, and the reason that we point this out is because um, we're trying to undo operations, but in the reverse order. So to, to make sense of this is I want you to think about when you get ready in the morning, right? You typically put your socks on before your shoes, right? So it's in that order. But when you try to undo that, you typically take your shoes off and then your socks. So you're, you're undoing it, but in the reverse order. So here, right, instead of going in this normal way, we're actually going the opposite direction. Okay. Now this here, it, it, it spells gem dust, but going the opposite direction, we'll write it out here. Right, it spells sad make. Now, the reason that we put this here is because when you undo um, or when you solve a two-step equation, there is a correct order. And if you don't solve in the correct order, then you could potentially get a mistake and not find the value that satisfies the equation. So for the first example, uh, let's write this acronym off to the left. And let's identify, right, in this equation, what operations are happening. Right, we have two times x and we have a negative five on the left side, right? We're, we're asking what operations are happening with the variable. So I'm gonna underline m and s. So when you're trying to solve the equation, you go in that order. This tells me I've got to undo subtraction first. So we drew the line, we'll add five here. That's the opposite of subtracting five. Since I did that on the left side, I've also got to do that on the right side. We'll put an equal sign. We'll rewrite the equation, still 2x, and this is equal to 12. Now we're going to undo multiplication. 
opposite of multiplying is dividing by 2. Um, we'll divide both sides by writing a fraction bar, 2 to both sides. We'll draw a line there because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And we'll have x equal to 6. All right, 12 divided by 2. So that's our final answer here. Now, you could check the answer. I'm just going to do this uh, verbally. If I plug a 6 in here, 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, so that checks out. That's the value. It's kind of hard to just guess the answer here. Um, but let's go to example 2. Okay, I'll rewrite the acronym. And since the variable's on the right side, let's look at what's happening there. Okay. This 3 is underneath it. It is dividing. Right, this is, reads as x divided by 3. This 8 is adding, not because of this plus sign, but because it's a positive and it's by itself. Uh, so this is technically A here. So just be mindful of that. So we're going to undo adding 8 by subtracting 8 to both sides. So I write it here. And I also write it here. Okay, 8 minus 8 is nothing. It's 0. 4 minus 8. Um, this is equal to negative 4. So using our um, integer operation rules, this is equal to a positive um, x over 3. We don't have to write the plus sign there, but we'll just write the uh, fraction. All right, now second of two steps, we'll undo dividing by 3. So opposite of dividing is multiplying. We'll put the dot here, put a multiplication, dot here. I'll put three on the left side of that. All right, three divided by three goes away. This is just one, x or just x. On the left side, positive times a negative is a negative, and three times four is 12. So our final answer here is negative 12, equal to x. You can check the answer there. And finally, let's finish up this front side. I'm going to go over example three. We'll have example four be a you do. All right, so here, and then we'll, we'll get to the back side. So what operations are happening here? So I, just be careful with this. Um, two is dividing, but this plus six, this plus six even though it's an adding 6, you're not going to underline A for addition. The reason is because this, I'll, I'll put parentheses here, this is a group. So although we don't see the parentheses, I'm writing the parentheses to indicate that it is a group. So I think if, if some students, I'll put this in red, you should not do this. Don't, don't draw this. If students underline A, I think they're going to think, okay, let's get rid of adding 6, so let's subtract 6 first. The thing is, you can't really touch that numerator of the fraction because... We, it's in a fraction. We, we have to get rid of the fraction first. There's kind of this the force field that's around it. So we're going to get rid of this fraction by first undoing division. So instead of dividing by 2, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And as you can see with this, right, the 2s will go away. We're just left with, you don't have to write the parentheses, n plus 6 equal to, the left side will be equal to negative 2. So by multiplying both sides by 2, we got rid of the fraction. And now we're left with the numerator, that group. And in that group, it is adding 6. So we can ask ourselves, what's the opposite of adding 6? It's subtracting. All right. We'll get n equal to. On the right side, we have negative 2 minus 6. You could think this as owing $2 and owing $6 all together. It's owing $8. So when they have the same sign, you add and keep the sign. So our final answer here is n equal to negative 8. I will check the answer for this because uh, I just want to prove why the solution or wh why do we apply the inverse operation in this way. So instead of n plus 6 divided by 2, we'll put negative 8 plus 6 divided by 2. So if we simplify this, I have to simplify my numerator. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. I'll rewrite everything else. And negative 2 divided by positive 2 is a negative 2. All right, so this is a true statement. Um, negative 1 equal to negative 1. Oh, sorry, negative 2 divided by positive 2 is negative 1. Um, 
Anyways, we get it. We get an equivalent statement here. Um, that is the final answer. So we've checked it. I'd like for you to determine um, the answer for and process for example four. So pause the video here. But I'm going to move on to the back side where we have um, what, what are called like terms here. Okay. So we're going to label this. This is combining like terms. Okay. So we call these like terms because these are terms that can be combined. Um, uh, they both have variables. They both have coefficients. But it's still a two-step equation. So we have 3n minus 7n. So you could say, instead of n, let's say dollars. You have $3 minus $7, right? If you take $7 from 3, we're still going to owe $4. So this is negative 4. Instead of dollars, it's n. So negative 4n. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Now, in order to solve this, again, applying inverse operations, we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. That's equal to 1. We'll get n equal to, the right side will be a positive 1. Negative divided by negative and 4 divided by 4, just 1. Okay. Um, I'll, leave, I'll leave it to you to figure out what is the answer for example 6. Uh, but just be mindful that this is a 1a minus 6a equal to negative 20. But you're going to apply similar steps just with different numbers as we did with example 5. All right, so give that a shot. You have two you do's. We'll be checking example four and example six.